So first thing I wanted to ask you was I was reading that you had rewatched a bunch of MCU films Mm -hmm. to prep for this one. I know Captain Marvel must help, but what is an MCU movie that folks might not expect Mm -hmm. to have influenced this movie heavily? Ooh, um, Iron Man 3. (laughs) How so? Um, I just love it so much, first of all. I think it's just... I think it's one of the best uh, Marvel films. Um, but also, in a really practical sense, actually, the, um, the uh, what's it called? The, um, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting this. You have a lot. Uh, go- I know, right I'm like, now. oh my God, my brain. <laughs> um, what's the thing called? The, the thing that was under their skin, the fiery thing? The extremis. Extremis, thank you. Oh my goodness. So the extremis effect, which I really loved in the film, was um, influenced us on another thing we did in our film, which... You'll see when you watch it. Okay. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair yeah. enough. I look forward to that. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to ask you about from our press notes is you said when you sign on for a Marvel movie, mm. the first thing they tell you is to talk to other directors. Yeah. Two questions about that. Who gave you the best advice? But then also having gone through this experience, what advice would you give a future MCU director yeah. based on how it was making the Marvels? Wow. Um, it's so hard to say the best advice because like, you just need different things at different times. I would say the best Oh, but they were also all great. I'll okay, take the person multiple I talked to. Examples. Okay, the person I talked to the most was Destin Cretton, mm-hmm. um, and he was just great at like knowing every step of the process. Like, oh yeah, you're stressed about that, but you don't have to be stressed about that. Oh, you should look at that though. You know, it was like very like, oh, I've been through this. Like, I get you. Um, and then um, Ryan Coogler is really great. Like I've said this a lot. Like you know, be yourself, and that's probably what I would say to the next person. Like, just bring everything you have. Um, they can take it or leave it, but like as long as you bring everything that you have, and that's for everyone, the actors, the department heads, you know you've done done everything you could. Going back to what Destin said, mm-hmm. what is one thing that you should be stressed about when making a Marvel movie, but then what is one thing that mm-hmm. most filmmakers would be stressed about, yeah. but you actually shouldn't? <sighs> okay. Whew. Mm-hmm. Um, that you should be stressed about. Um, I mean, for me, in this movie, we had a lot of cats. And I was going to be stressed about that. I was like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? But actually, it was fine. So there's something I didn't need to be stressed about. Okay. Um, something that you do need to be stressed about. I don't know. You kind of have such a great crew that, like, at the end of the day, like, when you figure out how to collaborate and work together, no problem really is too big. Surrounding yourself with the right people exactly. makes all the difference yeah, on any yeah. film and also mm-hmm. having the best possible cast. That's where I want to go next. Yeah. I love talking about the different approaches to acting out there. So can you maybe name something specific about Brie, Tiana, and Iman yeah. in terms of how they approach the work? Maybe even something about them that calls for something different from you as their actor's director. For sure, yeah. Um, so I think everyone needs something different in order to get to where they want to get to. And there were a lot of there's so many levels to the performances for all of them in the movie. Um, something that Brie, Brie says a lot is like, "What are the stakes?" You know, you know, she wants to be sure that she's understanding exactly how I'm in, how I'm envisioning the end result of the scene in terms of the emotional tenor of it. And so that was something that I thought was really helpful and really cool and specific to her. You know, like, "What are the stakes?" and and being clear about that was really helpful to her. Um, and then Tiana like was so specific and visual, so it's like, "We're on a blue screen stage." She's like, what is it? What does it look like? You know, like wanting all that detail so that for her, like she can like internalize that. Um, and then Amon and I would just geek out on set. But she's also just like Amon's like the most the most prepared, like knows all her lines, knows everything. Um, and um, I don't know anything specific to Amon besides just us just like nerding out. But uh, but yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. Every interview that I've watched with her, like that's the vibe I get from yeah. her, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I want to jump to uh, the tail end of the process now, mm-hmm. specifically when it comes to test screenings, because that part of the process fascinates me because yeah, yeah. I find it can be so difficult to figure out when to take notes and when to pass on yeah, them. For sure, yeah. So can you maybe give us an example of each a time when you got a note, yeah. you took it, applied it, it made the movie better, but uh-huh. then another note you got where you're like, you know, like this doesn't feel right for my <laughs> movie, and I'm not going to do that. Um. I mean, that's sort of every filmmaking process mm-hmm. where whether it's getting notes from your executives or you do, because even if you're not doing test screenings in the way that Marvel does, you can do, you know, like I, I usually like to just get like a group of people I trust and have great taste together. And that's really um, that's really helpful for me. I think I can't think of anything specific because it literally is you get every kind of note you could possibly think about. Like you could get literally someone said, I don't like that tank top. What am I going to do about that? Literally nothing. So um, so I think it's really like, and I think about this when I give notes, am I giving a note because I'm asking them or wanting them to do it the way I would have done it? 
or if, or am I giving a note that is improving what they actually want to do? And so those are the two kinds of notes that you get usually. And like I think the ones that you take are the ones that improve the movie that you're trying to make. And the ones that you leave behind are the ones that make a movie that are uh, the way someone else would. Oh, God, I hope everyone who attends a test screening listens to that <laughs> and understands that mentality and approach to it. I'm so excited to see this movie. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much.